All right, guys. Hello. So next stop on the uh, Europe trip was Maori, Italy. Uh, that's on the Amalfi Coast, about an hour south of Amalfi, and about uh, an hour by bus north of Naples, I believe. So the drive on that coastline, for those of you who don't know, is like a windy sea road at, you know, 300, 400, yeah, 400, 500 meters above sea level. And the road's about, you know, a good solid two lanes, no more, and uh, winding in and out and around these corners heading up from Naples up to uh, Maori. It was absolutely nuts. These buses, these long haul buses were driving through these roads and it was like ripping around corners, you know, honking the horn blind, just like ah, ah, coming around the corner, hope no one else is there, like a motorbike or a car or anything basically. And they would just, everyone was like sitting there coming around corners, they'd honk their horn and basically like hope for good faith that the person on the other side of the corner heard the horn. It was like absolutely nuts. And this bus started not too full. It was like, yeah, this isn't too shabby. And like, you know, everyone's sitting down, everyone's got seats. And as the bus kept going and going and going for this hour, as its last stop was Amalfi, it would pick up people. And eventually we were sitting on this like long haul bus with people standing in the middle lane, you know, winding through this road, people tilting over, not tilting over. I think if I remember correctly, the back door also was like half a jar open or like you couldn't lean on it or else you would literally fall out of the bus. So the adventure to Maori was like one of the better <laughs> drives, I would say, uh, we got to do on a bus in Europe for sure. It was quite a thrilling experience not to mention when you looked over to your left out the window the views were spectacular because the whole time you're driving on this cliffside and there you have the mediterranean just right in front of your face and it's beautiful and that's all you see because from there it's like the next stop is spain so you know <laughs> there's not really much going on other than beautiful sea life and and you obviously have some boats and whatnot traveling along the cliff sides and stuff. And then if you look to the right on the cliff sides, the more intense stuff was they were cultivating the land. There was like lemon orchards and grape vines on these cliffs, like where people were like, yeah, we can definitely grow some grapes on this slope that's about, you know, like hay and like, they would just have platforms. It was just like staircase orchards essentially where you one 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 staircase had one row of vines one next staircase had another row of vines another row of vines another row of vines and it was absolutely nuts so maori uh getting there was quite the experience and once we got into maori we got dropped off and uh, we started to walk towards our airbnb and this airbnb was quite something it wasn't plenished very well like it didn't have very many utensils or cooking you know bowls and pots and pans or anything along those lines uh it was really a struggle when it came to that but as far as where the airbnb sat was quite nice it was deeper into the valley so as you come into maori it's all along the coastline and maori has kind of got this valley that heads inland and that's the city of maori so we hiked about uh, 15 20 minutes off of the coastline into the valley and up the valley onto the side of the valley, which is where this uh, Airbnb apartment was. And we get up onto this uh, Airbnb and it was really, really spectacular views from their terrace. So we had this big terrace here while we were staying here for the few days we were there. And most of the days we end up hanging out on the terrace and reading our books and just enjoying the view because basically you look out off the terrace and it was like the entire town of Maori followed by the ocean. And so that was quite spectacular to see. And then they obviously had some like future structures. I think the church and, and whatnot were, were quite spectacular as well, especially in the nighttime, they actually ended up lighting the churches up and, and having some fun with that. So that was part of uh, the journey to Maori. Once we settled down, you know, we hung out for quite a bit. And this is, uh, Maori was where Jen and I actually spent our first 
year anniversary. Uh, so note to the kids, don't drink too much alcohol on your first anniversary with your girlfriend, wherever it may be, because, uh, you know, bumpy roads that are not supposed to go on happen, uh, I would say, with the consumption of alcohol and some words are said that are not necessarily meant. So Jen and I's first event anniversary was fantastic. Uh, up until about lunchtime, we got, went down to this bar that we had been going down to uh, on a pretty regular basis and we started drinking cocktail after cocktail after cocktail after cocktail. And uh, eventually I think I said something, I don't even remember what it was, I said something, Jen got really mad and we got in this argument and got to the point where I paid and I left. I was like, I'm gonna go to the beach, you can go, we'll do whatever you're gonna do. And uh, she was like, I'm gonna go to the beach down here. So Jen goes down to the beach, just, you know, a couple hundred meters down the road. And she apparently was like, five minutes after leaving us, she was like, I wanted to go back to Mitchell. And she couldn't find me, I was down at the beach and I just took a nap. I was like, I'm tired, I'm drunk, it's like 1.30 in the afternoon, this is ridiculous. And I slept there for like multiple hours. I woke up, all this noise. I was like, what the heck is going on? There's this parade that's going through. Uh, there was this parade that was going through Maori because it was a big holiday, a Catholic holiday. And so I'm walking around. I'm like, this is like, okay, I'm kind of still pissed off. I don't have my girlfriend by my side. It's our first anniversary. Like, I'm going to go find her now. You know, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon. We got to get some dinner plans going. And, and salvage the rest of this day because of the stupid mistakes we made earlier in the day. And so I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I get up to the hotel, I get back to the Airbnb and fair enough, there's Mitch and Lisa, like, you know, sitting there. I'm like, yo, have you guys seen Jen? And they're like, no, she was just here looking for you. And I was like, great. Didn't even speak many more words than that. Headed out the door looking for Jen. I was like, great, this is a small town. I should be able to find her. Maybe I'll go down to the beach again. See if I can find, you know, the one white blonde chick who's out <laughs> in this town at this time of year. Everyone else is Italian and everyone else is celebrating with their families this Catholic holiday. And I'm walking down and walking down and walking down the street. And eventually, I see Jen, like, run up to me with this Italian man. Like, he's, like, 35, 40 kind of guy, and Jen started, oh my god, I'm so happy I found you, and I was like, who's this, like, what's going on, and, and apparently Jen had found, like, the social light of the town, like, the guy who knows everyone, and uh, he approached Jen, and was like, oh, you see Bloss, because he's looking for someone, and so Jen obviously explained the situation, and uh, there was the whole freaking town, not the whole town, but, like, apparently quite a few people were out looking for me, uh, trying to get... Jen and I reunited. Meanwhile, there's this like massive parade going on. So it was quite, it, it was quite a nice scene, I would say for the first anniversary, you know, we lost each other and uh, as the parade passed that I could see Jen and Jen saw me and then we, we made things better and we enjoyed. Unfortunately, we did not get to have like a very nice romantic dinner because of this Catholic holiday that was in the town on the day of our anniversary. So all the restaurants were completely booked out. Uh, we ended up just going home and enjoying a more casual evening um, than most. But you know, at the end of the day, it was still a phenomenal day and Maori itself was a great place to be. Uh, I think the drink of choice there was the lemon cello because that's where the true original lemon comes from. And these lemons are like the size of a large orange. You know, they're like this big. That's like what a lemon is there. And it's not as bitter as uh, the lemons we have here, or sour, I guess, as the lemons we have here. They're very sweet, and they would make this liqueur out of them. And we were mixing this liqueur, like 25% liqueur with some Sprite, and, and enjoying that. And those were some deadly, deadly drinks for sure. Um, and that's kind of what Maori was like. Maori was this beautiful, quaint, little, small Italian coastline town that had, you know, things to do, like things to see and shops to go into and, and check out all the way along the line. And it was a bit of like this touristy town um, that was a little less mainstream than Amalfi, which is like the big Amalfi coast, Amalfi everything uh, town. And this was a smaller kind of Italian resort, not resort town, just an Italian coastal touristy town on the road to Amalfi kind of what Squamish would be like to Whistler or Aria. I'm not too familiar with any other kind of similar scenarios there, but that's kind of 
what we did in Maori, um, and I can double check and see if there was anything else we did there, but I, uh, I believe that was Maori, and it was absolutely phenomenal. I, I truly enjoyed it, um, and it was nice to, to go there as we kind of headed up north. Next on our stop was going to be Nice, and at this point we were very comfortable with the whole Euro Rail Pass thing, so we had to get our bus back down into uh, Naples, or it was Salento, I think, not Naples. Naples is north of Maori, Salento is south. So was Salento was the place where we came into. So we had to go back on this crazy bus, and uh, second time on the crazy bus was just as good as the first time on the crazy bus. It was definitely quite the entertaining uh, hour-long bus ride. And, uh, yeah, oh, I also decided in Maori to try a Jen's Pescatarian diet. That was the start of my one week as a Pescatarian. Um, so I will tell you guys more about that in, uh, when we get to Nice, but in Maori it wasn't really that difficult because we were talking like on a coastal town, sea town, there was, you know, seafood everywhere. But I thought, you know what, I've got a girlfriend who's a Pescatarian, I think I should try and sympathize with her and try and understand what it's like to be a pescatarian so i went on a little adventure into the realm of dieting which uh, like i said i'll talk to you guys a little bit about next time so i hope you guys are enjoying these videos and uh, this room is the entry foyer of our home so we've got you know the closet here when you get through the front door all the shoes and whatnot there's the den audrey's got all her shoes audrey's got all her net artwork uh, can't forget the beautiful Stellar J painting up there that uh, got to look at every single day since I was basically born. And, uh, and then you guys have been in there in the entry in the entertainment room. So this is the foyer when you come into our house. And I hope you guys are enjoying these videos and we'll talk to you guys next time. Have a good one.